So we are starting to learn Hilchot Shabbat since you, that's what you said, let's learn Hilchot Shabbat. And today will be more of an introduction to Hilchot Shabbat. Well, let's move into introduction. We, we will, Be'ez Rat Hashem, get to the first Siman in Shulchan Aruch. So if you bought the book, that's great, because we will get to it. But I'll, I'll start with a question. We know that Shabbat uh, takes like a very serious, we take it very seriously in Judaism. Like if you look at the Orach Chaim, so we have six volumes of Mishnah Brura, uh, one book out of it, the, the thickest book is about Shabbat. Not only the thickest book is about Shabbat, but Chelek Dayat, the fourth uh, book, which is not so thick, also part, partly talks about Shabbat because it talks about Eruvin, and also Eruvin is mainly for Shabbat. And we have a Halacha, or that uh, someone who or someone who violates Shab- Shabbat, so he is as if he's a Mumar Nikolat Rakhra, as if he's, he's violating, violating the whole uh, all of the mitzvot. I say it's, it's one mitzvah, it's one mitzvah, I'm sure that it's an important mitzvah, and we, we meet it uh, uh, once a week, so obviously it must be a very important mitzvah, but why is it, why is Shabbat so important? Like, oh, wow, wow. Okay, there's many other mitzvot. Why is Shabbat so important that uh, we even have halachot, someone who violates Shabbat, the mezid, the shogay, he doesn't, we're not going to it now. Uh, maybe his wine is a, is for a problem. Maybe he can get an aliyah, can't get an aliyah. Why Shabbat from all other mitzvot? Okay, so we're imitating Hashem. Who is on the seventh day? Shabbat is, is so Shabbat is a siman. Also, Tfilin is a siman. It's also important. Okay, Shabbat, Brit Milah, and Tfilin. Okay, so Brit Milah is important, okay, but only half of the population has a Brit Milah, right? Okay, more is half of the population can can have a, a brit milah. Uh, tefillin is also an ot. Okay, so it's true that karkafta uh, manach tefillin. Karkafta means in Aramaic a head. Uh, that that's covered. That doesn't put tefillin. That's a very bad thing. Okay, but but sure, uh, if someone doesn't put on tefillin, he put on tefillin once on his bar mitzvah, and that's it. As we say in Hebrew, henach tefillin pa'amayim. Pa'am ba bar mitzvah and pa'am ba'aron. I put. You can't translate it to, to English so well. But I put filling twice, once on the bar mitzvah, and then I put them in, in the cupboard, in the cabinet. Okay, so, okay. Um, so, so there are people like that, and sure, you won't say, okay, there's a the problem with the, 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 the kashrut of the wayan, or, or can get can they get an aliyah, can't get an aliyah. How come for Shabbat we say something else? That's different. And you said, imitating Hashem, well, the Gemara says, I'm going to argue. Okay? Everything you said, at least in the beginning, is just to try and bring more ideas. So I'll try to argue so you can have maybe more, more ideas. But you're asking something which is correct, but still, let's argue. Why? Because that, that way you can prove that I'm, that I'm Jewish. Right? <laughs> you say, I, said, I think I said to you once, <laughs> two Jews meet. Right? One says, Shalom Aleichem. That one can't just repeat and say Shalom Aleichem. What does he have to say? Aleichem Shalom. I'm saying the opposite of you. Now we can start meeting and, and talking to each other. Anyway, <clears throat> good evening. So, so uh, the, the Gemara says, uldovkabo, uh, like cling to Hashem. How can you cling to Hashem? So the Gemara says, Mahu achu, mafatachu, mahu chanun, afatuch, atachanun. It's more attributes between people. Like to have mercy on people, to be kind to people. And uh, not about Shabbat. So how come Shabbat is such an important thing in Judaism? Acknowledging God is the creator of the world. So Arnold is saying acknowledging God is the creator of the world. And that's already begins an answer. Okay, we, we begin an answer. The and here we have a bit of Hashkafa. The the book of Kuzari. And the Kuzari book, a book of Hashkafa, which the Gra writes that all of the books are Kodesh. All of the books are holy. The Kuzari is Kodesh Kodeshim, the holy of holiest. Um, so if you want to learn Ashkafa book and seriously, so go in the Kuzari, especially the beginning of the book. And he says that the Jewish faith is based on meeting Hashem. Okay. What, what is Jewish uh, faith? The fact that we as human beings can meet Hashem. We met him in Mount Sinai. We met him going out of Egypt. We met him through the whole time of the first temple. And even today we have Ashkecha Pratit, we have, we pray to Hashem, Hashem cares of our mitzvot. 
So the, the, the basic idea of Judaism is Hashem can appear in this world and he can listen to us and, and, and there's some connection between us and Hashem, right? If you want to take maybe uh, Christianity, so, so, so maybe the God, according to them, appeared as a, as a human being, but since then there's like some kind of disconnection, right? And therefore someone who wants to be a priest, at least in the Catholic uh, religion, so what does he do? He disconnects from life, right? He, he disconnects from life because God is, is, is too high to be in, in this our simple world. So you, you have to disconnect from life. And the, the, the idea of Judaism is no, God appears here in our life. So Arnold, you mentioned uh, the creation. How does God, when, when was the first time that God appeared, Hashem appeared in, in the world? Adam Rishon, or creation, right? Bereshit, Bara Elohim, God created the world. When is the first time God put some kind of talk or, or, or connection with, with the human beings? Adam Rishon, Adam Rishon, right? Yeah, Adam Rishon, Hashem, Hashem spoke to him, he blessed them. What, what is the idea of Shabbat? Shabbat is Vayanach Be'yom Hashvi'i. Hashem, in the world, gave the world a place of nature. Okay, I was active now, says Hashem. And now I'm letting the laws of the nature to continue. But I'm still here. It's main Ram Haba. It's like the, uh, the world to come, Shabbat. So Shabbat symbolizes, it's, it's an ot, like you said. Like it's an ot. You said it's an ot. Okay, you said it's an ot, yeah. It's an ot. But it's, it's an ot which covers time, covers a, um, a space of creation. So it really covers everything of Hashem appearing here in the world. It's filling... And Brit Milah is a lot of a commandment of uh, Hashem commanded us to do something. But Shabbat is really Hashem here in the creation of the world. Already in the creation of the world, He gave us the opportunity or the option to connect to Hashem. So that's why Shabbat is so important. And so when we learn about Shabbat and see all the halachot about Shabbat, you're allowed to do that. You should remember that the idea of Shabbat is Hashem is with us in the world. We have a an option to connect to a spiritual level here in this world. Because I don't think the creation tells us that God is still active in the world. I'd be called Aristotle. Right. According to Aristotle, God just created the world. God continues then forgot creating. about God. Right. God so, continues creating every day. We make brachot yeah, in the morning the, the, the to indicate that yeah. we acknowledge oh, yeah. Hashem's so, creation. The creation story doesn't tell us. So, so Shabbat actually has two main, two reasons, which we find in the Seret Ali Oh. It's actually mentioned in many places. Shabbat is mentioned in many, many places in the Torah. The first time it's mentioned is the time of the creation. So to say Hashem created the world, at least for some time, there was a connection, right? And then you can say, our total halt that the world was all, always there. There was never a, a connection, according to Aristotle. The, the ancient philosophy holds, they say in Hebrew, Alam Kadmon. The world was, was always there, God was always there. There was never uh, a will of God to create the world. So Shabbat goes against that idea. But you can still say, asks Arnold, or maybe God was there for, for a few moments, a few days, a few years, but then afterwards they forgot about the world. So Shabbat appears again also uh, in going out of Egypt, right? In Parashat Beit Hanan, in the book of Dvarim. So Aset Adibot repeats themselves again. And there, the reason for Shabbat is that God took us out of Egypt. So that's really the case. It's not just a one time, it's a continuous time. And then Shabbat is mentioned many other times also in, which Shabbat mentioned a few times, Kitisa and other places, the Mishkan. Right? Shabbat is mentioned a few times around the Mishkan. As if to teach us, it's not a one time in the beginning of the world, and it's not a big event. It's not just a big event going out of Egypt. It could be a daily event of us meeting Hashem. Like in the Mishkan. Every day they used to go to the Mishkan. Korban Tamid, twice a day. Right? So the Mishkan you meet the whole time. So Shabbat really is mentioned in all those things to say Hashem was here in the beginning, in the, the beginning of the nation, and really every day. So that's why Shabbat is so important. That's the first introduction. Second introduction. Okay, we have two main mitzvot for Shabbat. Let's count them as two main mitzvot for Shabbat. 
שמור וזכור, שמור וזכור. או נגד דה רייטה דה רבנן דה קווסטיון, אוקיי? ואם יש שם אוסר קידוש דה רייטה דה רבנן, לא, סורי, קידוש דה רייטה. וואי, לא דה רייטה, אני חושב שאתה אמרת את זה פעם, נכון? אקורים לראש השיטה, אנחנו נגיד לזה. ואונה יכול להיות חלק מהקידוש. זכור, נכון. אז יש לנו שתי קודמות, זכור ושמור. זכור זה לעשות קידוש. ולקדש השבת, זכור זה פוזיטיב מצווה, ושמור זה נגטיב מצווה. וגמרא says that the terms in Hebrew, כי שמר, in the way it says, שישמר, שמור, פן, it says פן, and the word על, all of them are לא תעשה, זה הנגטיב מצווה, don't do, refrain from something. So שמור is the, the negative מצווה, okay, don't do things, and זכור is the positive, positive מצווה. And we have a question, what's the relationship between, between those two mitzvot? Are the two separate mitzvot? Is it maybe one, two, two sides of one coin? What, 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 what do you think? So, so why? Well, many Israelis, and I'm sure also out of Israel, many people uh, come home, uh, light candles, do kiddush, and then uh, open the TV or, or drive to the beach. So you, technically you can do one without the other. <laughs> well, we could, but you can still do it. Well, but, but they're doing Kiddush. Well, it, uh, if, if someone eats pork, okay, and... <laughs> okay. <laughs> but if someone eats pork, okay, and gives Zaka, will you say that he's not, he didn't give Zaka because he ate pork? So you, so, so you're claiming that two sides of the... Okay. okay, so you're claiming that the two sides of the coin and you can't do one without the other. But give me a proof. Oh, so you're giving a proof from Chazal. Chazal said that they're both said at the same time. Now to understand that, let's... The, if you look at carefully, if you read the, the Debot, there's many differences between the first commandment in Parashat Yitro and the second commandments in Vayet Hanan. Okay, quite a few differences between them. Chazal, for some reason, insists that from all those differences, there's two words that were said at the same time. Zachor and Shamor. We can't hear it, so we, hear, we, we have Zachor in one place and Shamor in, in another place. Okay, but, but they're, they're said in the same time. Why is it so important to Chazal, for Chazal to say such a thing? Because they're opposites, okay? Positive and negative are two opposites, right? So the, the side is Shabbat, the main part is Kiddush, or Shabbat, the main part is refraining from Melacha. The side, Zachor or Shamor. What do Chazal tell us? They're the same. It's two sides of one coin. So really in Shabbat, the idea of Kiddush, Onik Shabbat, it's the same idea of refraining from Melacha. Okay, they're, they're the same idea. The, the city of... It, 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 we, we act differently, okay? This, there's a difference between lighting a fire and eating. It's two different actions, okay? But both of them are around the same idea. Punishments are different also because there's a punishment for... There's never... There's hardly ever, besides very, very few cases like Bit Milah and Pesach, that there's a punishment for positive mitzvah. A positive mitzvah, you didn't do it, you didn't do it. There's always a punishment. Usually there's a punishment for an action. Okay, so for an action. If someone did something, then it's like a kid comes to school and the teacher asks him, what did you do? And the kid said, I did nothing. And the teacher says, that's exactly the point, the problem. You did nothing, right? But you can't punish someone for doing nothing. Okay? You, you, at least, at least in, in the laws of, of human beings. Okay? By Hashem, so that's something else. You, we punish someone for, for doing something, doing an avera. But in the core of them, in the, that's why the punishment is different. But the core of them is that really the, the respecting Shabbat and refraining from Malacha, both of them show the fact that Hashem is here in the world. Hashem created the world, and we have this meeting point with Hashem every week in a special way called Shabbat. So that's the core of both of them. So really there's a very big connection between them. And maybe therefore, the Shulchan Aruch, instead of starting from Shabbat, of what we aren't, we aren't allowed to do on Shabbat, the Shulchan Aruch starts for, with what? 
Morning Shabbat. What do we do for Shabbat? If you have a book so you can open, raise my bed. Okay, the first siman you're off my heart, right? Uh, so the first siman of of Shabbat. Okay, Shabbat. And and just even if we look at the look at the title, Lehidaher Bichvod Shabbat. We should be careful honoring Shabbat. Um, something should be careful about it. It's not just uh, okay, something we should be careful. Honoring Shabbat. And, and the Shulchan Aruch could start with a very simple and general idea. We should you know, take care of Shabbat and honor Shabbat. But he wants to get come here to the to the core of how important it is the fastest he could. And let's read it in Hebrew just to show how, how the Shulchan Aruch really says you really need to honor Shabbat. And then we'll translate it to English. Okay, so says the Shulchan Aruch. Afilu mi shetzarich leacherim. Even someone who's in need, okay, he, he needs help from other people. He, 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 he's, he's financial, uh, he's not in such a great place. Im yesh lo me'at mishelo. Even if he has a bit from his own, tzarich lezarez atzmo k'de lechabed et ha-shabbat. He needs to give himself, uh, encourage himself and in other order to honor Shabbat. I had a, I was in the base last week, so I had a, tell me soon, I had a, a, a question, how do I honor Shabbat in the base? We'll, we'll get to it soon. ולא אמרו שעשה שבתך חול ואל תצטרך לבריאות רוקס, אלא למי שהשעה דחוקה לו ביותר. There's a term, the Gemara says, I think it's Rabbi Akiva, uh, Rabbi Akiva says, do you make your Shabbat to be like a regular weekday and don't ask uh, for help from people? So that's what Ben Kiva said. Uh, and the Shulchan Aruch says, one second, I just told you a moment ago that even someone who doesn't have so much money, he should try and encourage himself to, to have something special for Shabbat. So who is that sentence of Ben Kiva, the halach of Ben Kiva, who is that talking about? Do you do your Shabbat? The Shabbat is a weekday and don't ask for help for people. That is only for someone who is really, really in, a, in, a, in the lowest place of need. He doesn't have any money. And he, he will make Shabbat the regular day and won't start asking for tzedakah. Um, therefore, says the Shulchan Aruch, on the regular day, the, a person shouldn't spend so much money on the buying clothes and other things, so he'll have some left over for Shabbat. The Mishnah Brewer brings here three levels. It's someone who has, he has a good wage, he has a good salary, he should buy for Shabbat uh, nice beef and wine, whatever a person likes. Very nice fish. Um, someone who doesn't have so much money, so he should buy something small, so small sardines. Maybe in those days, today people say sardines. I don't, I can't eat sardines. Something else, okay? So something herring, okay? Herring. Uh, uh, something, even if it's something small, but special for Shabbat. And the third and lowest level is someone who doesn't have anything at all, so he should, uh, he should treat Shabbat like a regular weekday. The Mishnah Bro adds, another fourth level, and that's maybe more for, for us as a community. If we know that there's someone in the community who, who gets stuck in any case, he, we, we are helping him, helping him financially, which for Shabbat, we should help him a bit more. So he'll be able to buy more things for Shabbat. So it's not just a personal obligation, it's also a communal ob obligation, part of Zaka to help someone to so have enough uh, to buy something for Shabbat. How do you uh, make Shabbat nice? So some say have uh, fish every day, every meal, some say at least once a meal. And the Mishnah Bura writes that if you don't like fish, you don't have to eat fish. <laughs> if you hate fish and you can't stand the smell of fish, um, I think some of my kids, oh, depending what fish we bring, if we bring some kind of fish to the table, they'll leave the table because they can't stand, especially if it's the whole, those whole fishes with the eyes that you can see it, they'll just leave the table. Yeah. What the... Yeah, it smells fishy. <laughs> so obviously, don't don't bring whole fish to the table if 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 people don't like it, right? If you if you are not an Ashkenazi and you hate to fill the fish, so don't bring the filter fish to the table. Okay, just bring something that you like. Why? Because it is well, because, yeah, it's written in some ways that you should bring, eat fish, and he tells us it's, you know, it's not the din, it's not it's no obligation in fish. Yeah. Yeah. Also, right. Does, 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 yeah. Seven. Seven. So a few of the Kabbalistic uh, uh, ideas of connecting fish for Shabbat, 
there's even a phrase in Hebrew, ha'ochel dag b'yom dag, someone who eats fish on the day of dag, that, which is seven, nitzal mi dag, he's saved from dag, which is dinash shal geinom, okay, din geinom. So, so to make, so Shukonach wants to tell us, look, the, the main, the, the reason for eating fish is because that's something extra, that's something special, and therefore, if you don't like fish, don't eat fish. But when we do these things, also we say, uh, Shabbat. Shabbat, right, yeah. Yeah, if you like herring, that's it. If you like herring. Uh, you don't have fish? Yeah, okay. Shabbat. Um, um, the, the reason, the Buu says that what's the reason we eat fish on Shabbat? We say that Shabbat it, it symbolizes the connection of Hashem to the world, right? And Shabbat also symbolizes the world to come. In the world, to, uh, in the creation, in the creation, Hashem can, uh, um, created the Taninim Gdolim. Taninim, Rashi says, what's the Taninim? Leviathan, the big whale. But uh, he saw the world can't exist when there's uh, those two big whales and they'll uh, multiply and destroy the world. So he killed the, the female whale and saved her for the world to come. Leviathan. Yeah, Leviathan. Okay, so the Leviathan will have in the world to come. And Shabbat symbolizes, we said, also the creation of the world. And also the world to come. So on Shabbat, we, we think also on the world to come, on Main Ramabah. Uh, so therefore, we we'll eat also fish as a, to, to remember this Leviathan. So therefore, because we have we have a few reasons in fish, that's why Mr. Bruno needs to tell us look, if you don't like fish, don't, don't eat fish. Um, okay. Uh, also, he says yeah, an interesting halacha if the, the fish, uh, fishermen, or people who sell fish, if they know that on Friday people are uh, uh, buying fish to raise up the prices, so you can uh, announce that for the next, uh, until when, no more fish on Shabbat, okay, until the prices uh, go down. So already in the Shabra, I guess we can say, okay, no, we don't buy this thing until you bring it down the price, even even if it's a mitzvah for Shabbat, yeah, <laughs> to this day, uh, so the, the, you can see, you, you can think also for the future, okay, if it will be too hot, and also the community. There's a rich person who said, I don't care, the fish costs 20 shekels a kilo, 200 shekels a kilo, for me it doesn't matter, no. We want the whole community to be able to buy fish, so if the pr price goes up too much, so the community can say, we aren't buying fish. <laughs> so, so you so can buy them on Monday. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. The Shulchan, the, the Mishnah Bura also writes actually. If someone is a bought fish on Monday, and then on Tuesday they decided that you aren't allowed to buy fish for Shabbat, so he can still eat it because he bought his fish before before it was announced that you aren't allowed to eat it. Um, I was that last week I was in in base for Shabbat, and they actually had fish and fish they have usually on, only on Shabbat. But besides the fish. So everything was the same. The food was more or less the same than the, the regular days. My clothes were more or less the same. I changed to, to fresh uh, clothes, but they were the same clothes. And I asked myself, how do I uh, have Onik Shabbat? So there's the fish, okay, there's the fish, which is different. But if you don't like fish, what do you do? Um, and then I said, okay, I'll, I'll buy something small from the Shechem, from the shop in the, in the base, and I'll save that for Shabbat. So... Whatever a person can do, something small, the whiskey, uh, whiskey for Shabbat. Okay? It, uh, on a regular day, you have a simple uh, um, blend, and on Shabbat, you have the, a single mouth, okay, for example. Uh, whatever, okay, things that what show that Shabbat is different. Okay, you come from the States, so bourbon, that kind of bourbon, and then uh, each one of the own. Uh... <laughs> okay, so that's. Uh, that's about how Shabbat needs to be important. Um, let's continue. With Takanat Ezra, Ezra established, Shiyu Mechabsin Gadim Mechamishim Shabbat Ikhnik Vod Shabbat. You do the laundry on Thursday for Shabbat. Um, and the reason, the reason is, even today, doing laundry takes, takes time, right? It's still, it's the laundry, you put it in, take it out, but it, it doesn't take so much time. It takes half an hour or something, I'm not sure how, all together. Um, those days, doing laundry <laughs> takes much more than half an hour. So Ezra established that do laundry before, on, on, a th on Thursday, so on Friday you'll have time to cook for Shabbat. And I think from here you can learn a general idea of if you're doing something, even if it's for Shabbat, but you know it takes a long time and it will, it will bother you. You, it will, you have problems now with 
cooking for Shabbat, carrying to Shabbat, the atmosphere, you come to Shabbat when you're dead tired and, and, uh, and angry after you, you've been working all day and like, you just want to get a shluf and uh, they bring out, the, the, especially on the, on the um, summer Shabbatot. They bring out the soup, you have the soup and fall asleep at the table. So like Ezra had his, his takana, trying to think what can you do beforehand? What can you do on Thursdays? How can you make Friday more of a calm day? Maybe even if it's a summer, take a small short shluf in the summer. Um, so you can come to Shabbat and, and have onik Shabbat, really enjoy Shabbat. So if you want to translate uh, Ezra's idea to our days, it's, it's trying to prepare a bit beforehand uh, for Shabbat. Okay, the mission of the maybe here there's an, an example of something which maybe today we can we can change. And I think quite a few families do it, and quite a few families do it differently. Let's read the, the Rama. Rama says, "Haga nohagim la lush kedesh shiu chala b'bayit la asot mem lechamim mivtzal yom shabbat v'yom tov." So before Shabbat, you make a big amount of dough so you can do a fresh chala, and you have bread. For Shabbat or for Yom Tov. Vehu mikvod Shabbat ve Yom Tov ve'en lishanot. And that's for Shabbat and Yom Tov, and, and you shouldn't change it. You shouldn't change it. Well, on those days, it was less common to, to buy from the shop. Today, it's very simple to buy from the shop, and some people will buy from the shop. So if they like the halal from the shop more, so buy from the shop. That's obviously, right? You don't have to have to make halot uh, for all the headache. If you just if you prefer, prefer the halot you buy from the shop, I think here you can buy from the simple halot that tastes like th- like uh, paper, more or less, until I think uh, Herbie's bread, I think you even get them here, right? So here, Herbie's halot. So it really depends what you like. If you like, I'm not sure Herbie's halot goes with hummus and uh, matbucha, right? So then you can buy the simple white halot. It really depends on where you come from. I went to an American uh, restaurant last week with a few students. So I brought, I had the uh, stir fry, uh, no, sorry, uh, French fries and, uh, and schnitzel. And I asked him, do you have hummus or No, no. we well, just have ketchup. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so it really depends what you like to eat and then based on that, what halot you can make. But anyway, that's the, says the Ramah, we should, we should uh, um, have it for Shabbat, for Shabbat and Yom Tov. That's the honor of Shabbat and Yom Tov. Uh, before we go to, the, to another reason in, brought in the Mishnah Brura, the simple reason why do we bake halot on Friday is to have a lot on, on, Shabbat, on, on Shabbat night. So they'll be fresh, right? Because if you, I baked two days ago, and uh, you can taste the difference. If I want to combine what we, what we just learned about Ezra's Takana, okay, what Ezra established about doing laundry, it takes time to do a lot. You have to uh, knead it and let it rise and then uh, make the braid it and put it in the oven and take care. That can take quite a bit of time, especially in the winter. If you bake halot, you won't have enough oven time for other things. And you, you, you come to Shabbat when you're, you're um, tired and, and uh, nervous. And so if I want to combine what Ezra said, do your laundry on Thursday, especially today when we have freezers. And if you freeze a challah, when it's fresh, you let it cool down, wrap it up well and freeze it, it can stay almost fresh for a week in the, in the freezer, maybe sometimes even more. Defrost it afterwards, put it in a platter, and it's uh, gishmak, right? It's uh, taste uh, nice and fresh. So, if you combine the salah hot, you can bake halot beforehand. Yet, and here was I won't say kabbalistic, but hashkafic idea. The Mishnah Brura brings that there's another reason for baking halot. Okay, since chava, okay, Adam was considered the chala of the world or the 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 dough of the world, which something which is the basic. When we learned brachot. So he mentioned many times that bread, that's the main food. That's the, okay, that's the essence of the food. So Adam was considered the, 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 the basic of all the world. And because Chava gave him to eat from the fruit, uh, she now destroyed the, uh, the chala of the world. And therefore, as to fix it, uh, the, the sin which was, was on Friday, so on Friday uh, you bake chalot, and that fixes up the sin of Adam Arishon. Um, so that's more of a hashkafic idea. If you can make halot on Friday and you don't have any problem and you, you made all the rest of the food on Thursday and you have time, great, that's great. But if you, it puts you into pressure, so the real, way, the real reason for making halot is to come to Shabbat and have onik Shabbat. Okay, so so let's just think of what's more important. Uh, another another minhag which uh, Ramah brings 
is eating, he calls it uh, mulyata. I'm not sure what will be the, the thing today, which is dough and uh, meat or whatever it is, the vegetables and dough above it. Okay, meat pie. Okay, meat pie on Shabbat. Um, uh, it's Zecher Laman, okay, uh, remembering the man, the manna which had the dew on the bottom, and on the top, and the man was in the middle. And the Rama writes, and I didn't see people who do it, okay, I haven't seen people, you don't have to do it, okay, if you, you, you don't have to do it. And the Mishnah Bura writes, and in our places, we do, do, we do do it. So uh, we do it. So. It says that you really don't have to do any of these things. However, if right. you do them, these are ways. Of acknowledging different aspects of, of Shabbat. Shabbat, right, uh, right. So, 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 as as many min hagim, we we try to remember more the uh, well, we have to remember the place of the min and where it comes from, and not to be like, strict to the min hag. Okay, so some people sing zmira, some people don't. Some people there there are there are so many min hagim ways to Shabbat, to acknowledge Shabbat. Shabbat. Right. So, if you like the muliata, if you like the pie. Great, and if you can make it, great. If you get sick out of it every week, you have the same pie. Okay, so you don't have to have pie every week. It's just, just a thing of a more creative. The idea is only Shabbat and to remember the miracles that Hashem did for us in the desert and the idea of Shabbat. Um, so that's the, that's the we finished now Reish bit, And Hashem, next week we'll ca- start coming into the more of the halacha. Shalom. Uh,